first of all thanks for inviting me for the talk so now let me start with the introduction of my work so today i will talk about uh, a meta heuristic optimization technique for the control of robotic system so the specific which meta heuristic technique which i am going to talk about is called digital antenna search so here is the outline of the a talk first of all i will talk about a brief background background of the beta antenna search algorithm then i will talk about the modeling of the robotic arm and then i will talk about the problem formulation how can we mathematically model several of these problem which we face with the robotic arm then i will talk about our control methodology and then i will talk about some of the numerical evaluations which shows the performance of our algorithm so first of all to understand about the beta antenna search and other meta heuristic optimization techniques we need to uh, talk a little bit about the background which start with the gradient weight optimization algorithm so the traditionally whenever we need to solve an optimization problem we will take the gradient and use some gradient based technique like gradient descent uh, for example to up to find the minimum value but there are several shortcoming of this type of technique first of all they they require the numerical gradient so it, it is not for, always possible to have a numerical gradient for every function or for every system second even if it is possible it is quite computationally expensive and it and third like it requires that the function is continuous and differentiable so in this in these uh, in, so in these situations we cannot simply use the gradient based algorithm and if we use it will require a lot of computation power so we revert to meta heuristic based optimization technique so meta heuristic is basically we based on our understanding of the problem we try to uh, find a quick algorithm to uh, to to find the optimal optimal value so these are very, so therefore these type of algorithm are very good at searching large large spaces and these does not require the gradients as we will later see they just require we know the actual model of the system so we don't even need to know the gradient so therefore they are very good at searching large spaces uh, also uh, so in in ideal case we want to do an exhaustive search but uh, it is not always possible and sometimes it is even it is impossible so there so these algorithm provide a trade off between the optimal value and uh, like the local optimum value also if we look at the history of gradient based algorithm we know that they are they are basically designed for local optimization once the search stuck in a local optimum there is no way to come out of the local optimum for example consider this function it have a step, several local optimum value so for example if the gradient stuck in one of the local optimum it cannot get out of this but in case of meta heuristic optimization they they have the capability to get out of a local optimum and they, they are very highly probable to reach a global optimum value similarly there are different type of meta heuristic algorithm some use single particle as some use populations as we will later see and some example where they are necessary are discrete optimization and non convex optimization so for example in this uh, discrete optimization we does not have numerical gradient so we cannot use them and even same in the case of non convex optimization uh, the the gradient based algorithm can stuck in local optimum so there are several different type of meta heuristic algorithm for every problem we can just think about a uh, efficient way to search the uh so there's a whole space and we can formulate but the most common type of uh, meta heuristic are based on nature inspired so we uh, read some or study some natural process and try to model it as a computational algorithm for example if we think of, of evolution as an optimization process because over a million of years of uh, evolution we know that the biological species began to improve their skills and increase their survival ability so in that in that case evolution is a optimization process 
but in our computation model we can we can uh, we can run through the generation very quickly so therefore it is very good candidate to uh, to model the uh, to model to, to optimize up system similarly for chemical processes we have developed several uh, metaheuristic optimization similarly biological organisms so biological organism have developed every biological organism has developed some uh, some uh, skills which are necessary for their survival and they have uh, they have uh, they have developed these skills over a large long period of evolution so these skills have them survive uh, so if we model these skills in form of computational model we can also leverage them to solve optimization problem so most common type of uh, nature inspired op uh, metaheuristic optimization algorithm are evolutionary algorithm genetic algorithm similarly particle swarm optimizer and on pseudony algorithm so the first two are based on evolution and natural selection and genetic mutation of uh, biological species then the particle swarm optimization is based on the swarming behavior of birds so we see in nature that even the each uh, bird in a swarm is capable of a very limited functionality but when they work together they can accomplish a lot of different things similar for the ant colony algorithm so each ant is only responsible for a small part of work but when they work together they can uh, they can uh, solve a lot of problem so now coming to beetle in search algorithm so beetle in search is inspired by the food forging behavior of beetles so if we look study the behavior of the beetles we can see that they have very excellent skills in searching for food uh, based on their sense of smell so uh, each is uh, like similar to several other insects beetle have two antennas so both of these antennas are capable of smelling or sense the intensity of the smell in their surrounding so like human have two eyes so we are able to see your vision so we can perceive the depth based on our two eyes similarly these type of insects have stereo olfaction so based on their two antennas they can smell and they can see the distance from uh, from different how, they can see how their their surrounding is uh, how many objects are present in their surrounding so if we model this behavior of the beetle so we can also develop a computational model for the optimization so for example here we can see a little example so for example this beetle is searching for food so he cannot see the source of the smell but he can based on his two antennas see the difference between two locations uh, of the smell so based on the the difference he, he can he can estimate what is the direction of the food but when it reaches some some other another location it will again uh, reiterate and see there is a new location based on the difference the gradient of the sense, uh, smell uh, which it feels and similarly at each step based on this type of gradient eventually it can reach the source of food so we can develop it in form of computation algorithm so first of all started with a random location it will it will search in a random direction and estimate a difference in smell and estimate a gradient in that direction based on the gradient it will estimate a direction vector then it will move in that direction and then repeat this process and you can and we have seen that this type of process when we mathematical model is able to find the optimal value very efficiently for example here we see a, a non convex function and uh, this lines show the path of different iteration so it each iteration it get closer and closer to the optimal value we see a little bit of divergence because this is a metaheuristic algorithm there is some uh, some degree of stochastic nature to it so we generate random variable number in each iteration so therefore there is some degree of stochasticness but overall it will always move towards the optimal value so here we uh, formalize it in the mathematical form so first of all we are given an optimization problem f of x and we want to find the optimal value for the function f and x is the searching variable so first of all we 
create a random search direction and we normalize it so that it does not affect our algorithm. Second, uh, based on this random direction, we estimate the location of both beetle antenna. So this you can see XL is left, XR is right, and based on our randomly generated vectors, we can we can calculate two positions. And to see which uh, value is higher, because we want to move to the higher value, so we use this uh, we use this expression. So this expression will give positive if the left antenna have high uh, high high intensity or negative if right antenna have high intensity. And based on this term, we can create a new update rule. So in next iteration, our beetle or our search particle will move to this new location. So we will only update the location of the actual beetle if there is an improvement in the value of the function. If the value of the function at f x new is greater than the previous best value, we will move to the location. Otherwise, we'll just ignore it. And if we repeat this process again and again, we will always move, move toward a lower value. As you can see here, x t plus one is all uh, or toward a higher value. For example, as you can see, x t plus one is always greater than x of t. So based on DS, we have also developed several of its variants. For example, uh, BAS Adam. If we if we uh, uh, familiar with the deep learning, the Adam algorithm is very uh, common. It is adaptive moment adjusting adjustive algorithm. So it is it is used for to adaptively adjust the step size at each iteration. So so this is one of the variant, and it shows that the position of this uh, this new materialistic technique is better than as compared to several of the traditional technique. For example, PSO is very commonly used algorithm. Uh, in materialistic community, and uh, we can see that our proposed algorithm is able is even is able to even uh, convert even faster than that. And another interesting property is that, as I mentioned, that we are using adaptive moment estimation. So if we use a simple DAS algorithm, as you can see, there is a lot of vibration near the optimal point. But due to, due to adaptive moment adjustment, so you can see this convergence is very smooth. So that is that, that is also one of the reasons that it is uh, quite fast as compared to original bar. Similarly, this is the Michael Weitz function. It is very common function in uh, to evaluate any optimization algorithm. Similarly, we also tried with linear regression and training a single layer neural network for non-linear regression. Similarly, another variant of beetle engineer search algorithm is uh, we developed is bus uh, swarm. So in this case, instead of a single beetle, we have uh, so, yeah, so we have a, a array of search particles. We don't have a single search particle. It is sim we try to simulate a similar perform a similar technique to that of a PSO, but to make it more efficient. So in this case, we still have one beetle, but it has several searching particles. And we evaluated this technique with uh, compared this technique with PSO again to show that if both are able to uh, both are able to convert to same value. But in case of DAS uh, swarm, it is most of the time it is able to converge at a faster rate. Sometimes it is slower, sometimes it is faster. But later we will see why it is still better. But the most important point here is that both are able to converge to almost same value. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned that both converge to almost same value, but if we look at the execution time, we can see that bar swarm is able to, most of the time, it is able to solve the optimization problem much quickly. Sometimes it, it takes a little bit more time, but most of the time it has a better behavior as compared to the traditional uh, materialistic optimization algorithm. Similarly, uh, there are several applications of the beetle antenna search algorithm. So since today I will be talking about the control of a robotic arm, but let me just introduce an other example. So we use a beetle antenna search algorithm for portfolio optimization. 
So in portfolio optimization, our goal is to find a list of stocks which will minimize our uh, risk for investment. So, uh, so formally we uh, so we have formulated this problem as optimization problem in which this term is called factors uh, models the risk of the investment and other term models some constraints. So because as we see that uh, beta and is an optimization algorithm, uh, so we actually convert these constraint to an unconstrained optimization problem. So the detail can be found in the paper, but it we use a penalty time approach to convert all of these constraints into a uh, into incorporate all of these constraints into the objective function itself. And then we evaluated the performance for the portfolio optimization problem uh, with about 50 company we took the historical stock data for these companies and we estimated the mean vector covariance matrix and then applied for this optimization problem uh, using beta Latina search and we compared it with several of the other algorithms including pso genetic algorithm uh, Pattern search and Fmin cone. So these pattern search and Fmin cone are uh, algorithm developed uh, in MATLAB. So these are uh, these are also uh, used for unconstrained optimization. So as you can see, uh, uh, this is the this is optimization problem in which we want to minimize the value of objective function. This is a minimization problem. So we want to uh, we want to reach a um, lowest possible value. For the objective function. So, so these results show that BAS is easily able to show achieve value uh, of, uh, similar to other or even better than the other algorithm. And the execution time for BAS is always faster, it is always uh, much quicker as compared to other comparative algorithms. Also, since I mentioned that this is a stochastic algorithm, so we can expect that. There is a degree of uh, randomness. So if we run the experiment again and again, we might receive different results. But here you can see that we ran the each experiment uh, at least 25 times and uh, plotted their uh, their distribution. So as you can see here again, uh, even with the randomness, so the, the results are are constrained in a very narrow range. So this. So this shows that the proposed algorithm is able to provide a very consistent performance. So now let us move toward the robotic arm model. So how can we use the this GS algorithm to solve the problem related to robotic arm? So a robotic uh, agent consists of several linear and circular joints. And most common type of robotic arm uh, have a redundant joint. So they have extra degree of freedom. For example, so we want to achieve uh, position and orientation control. We actually have six control, we actually have six states. But if we have seven, uh, seven joints, so we have one degree of redundancy. So this redundancy is very useful in, uh, in such robotic system since it can be used to optimize our performance. And achieve secondary goals as we will see later. And this type of robotic arm has several application in industrial automation, for example, moving payload, assembling components, packaging. So if we can just need to change the end factor, then we can use achieve a wide array of functions. Also, it is used in robotic assistive surgery. So let me talk about why this problem is considered uh, is considered challenging. So if we look at the model of a, a forward kinematic model of a robotic arm, so given if we are given the actuation of each of the joints, uh, uh, so and the length of each of the links, we can eventually find the position of the end factor. So the mapping from the angle space to the task space. On end, uh, the position of the end factor is is uh, quite trivial. It is non-linear, but it is quite trivial. It is we can easily find it. 
uh, also both this uh, so the location of these joints relative to each other are expressed in form of dh parameters so if we are given the dh parameter of any robotic arm we can construct a forward kinematic model and based on that we can find the location of its end factor so here is uh, is a method of how can we find the location of the end factor so we have transformation matrix from base to end factor so we start with base we we create the transformation matrix for the first joint and in the in this in the frame of the first joint we find the transformation matrix for the second similarly we change this we change this thing together so at the end we have uh, so at the end we have seven transformation matrix based on our seven joints and if we multiply them all together we get a transformation from end factor to the base so if we put the angle of all of these joints in this transformation we will get the position of the end factor in the base coordinate system and each transformation matrix is is given like this and as you can see it is based on the dh parameter theta i and alpha i are dh parameters so dh parameters are standard for any robotic arm it is part of a manual so now as i mentioned that the forward kinematic is quite trivial so we have this transformation matrix if we give the angles of each joint we can find the transformation and we can translate it but consider a reverse problem so i want to move the robotic arm at a specified location so i want to have a reverse transformation from uh, from the uh, from the task space to the joint space but uh, but this transformation is uh, impossible for most for most of the robot such a transformation cannot be written there is no analytical expression for the reverse transformation so we need to use some other technique to to solve this problem so in order to move a robotic arm to a specified location we need to find the joint angles so let me show one of the traditional ways to do this so one of the traditional way to do this is based on inverse jacobian so since i mentioned that inverse direct inverse transformation cannot be achieved so we take the gradient and this gradient so this so this equation if for a given value of theta this equation is linear so you can as you can assume that in a small local region in a, for a given value of theta this equation is linear and of in this uh, in this space we can find its inverse transformation but as you can see here j theta is a is itself a variable matrix it, it is a jacobian matrix so it depends on the joint angles so when we move the robotic arm a little bit its jacobian matrix will change so here is the problem so we need to calculate the jacobian matrix again and again also for the redundant robot jacobian matrix is not invertible so we need to find pseudo invert which is also very uh, computationally expensive task so here uh, the here we will see the power of peter jenner search algorithm to avoid this type of computation we don't need to find the gradient uh, in each iteration we don't need to convert it into the velocity space this is a velocity space equation we don't need to do that we will just operate on the joint level and find the inverse transformation so first of all let us model all of this problem as optimization problem so first of all the tracking control the tracking control problem is that i want to move the end factor to a specified location f is the forward kinematic model of the robot and xr is my reference location and this is the error and we can with the tracking error we can if we minimize the tracking error it will move toward this location so second problem is optical avoidance so i uh, suppose that i want to move the robotic end factor to a specified location but if there is an obstacle in between 
so obviously the robotic arm cannot just move through here so it will need to design a trajectory by avoiding this obstacle so here we have two goals one is minimize the tracking error and second maximize the distance of each joint uh, each joint from uh, from the obstacle so as i mentioned that in in such cases having a redundant robotic arm is very useful since we have a high degree of freedom so we can easily leverage that high redundant degrees to solve additional problem so the third problem which i i will be going to discuss is controlling using the uh, mobile platform so, so consider that the robotic arm is mounted on a mobile platform or an, uh, on a differentially driven non holonomic platform so in this case we have added more degree of freedom so previously our robotic have, have seven degrees so now in addition we have uh, two more degrees in, in fact we have three more degrees of freedom but we also add one more constraint non holonomic constraint so uh we so we will see later we can solve more problem we can uh, we can achieve more movement in this case as compared to just using the robotic arm and the last problem which i'm going to discuss today is rcm constraint so rcm constraint are a set of constraint which are very important for the surgical robot so in a surgical robot uh, we don't just want to move the end effector to a specified location we also want the orientation of the end factor such that it passes through the uh, passes through the incision point so consider we here we have the end factor we don't want the robot to move move the end factor here from any other angle we just want to move the end factor to the incision point otherwise it can cause a lot of damage so again here in this case we have two goals first of all we want to minimize the tracking error and second of all we want to uh, minimize the the distance of the end factor from the rcm point it is called remote center of motion point so this is the incision incision uh, on the patient the surgery, on the patient on which surgery is performed this is the center of the point and here we have the end factor so again we have two uh, two goals so now i i will explain how can we solve all of this problem using uh, the proposed optimization technique so for the tracking uh, control problem it is quite trivial we have the ob objective function uh, we have the constraint this is the joint angle constraints we know that the joint angle cannot go indefinitely there is a restriction on the motion of each joint so this is the joint angle constraint and this so as i mentioned that there is this constraint so we create a projection function so this projection function whenever uh, our search for a point goes beyond this region this this feasible region it just project it backward backs into this region uh, for the obstacle widens as i mentioned that we have two goals minimize the tracking error and maximize the distance of each link from the obstacle point so uh, both of these objectives can be unified using parenti term approach so first of all this is the tracking error we want to minimize it so this is a minimization problem and since we want to maximize this term so if we just take the reciprocal of this term we so we can say we want to minimize this and these are the constraint and this this is the uh, so and, and this is uh, another constraint so we don't want the e, any of the link from the robot go is uh, get very close to the obstacle so this constraint prevents that so here we have a unified optimization problem and we have these constraint and other important thing here we have this uh, lambda term so this lambda term control which of these objective will be given more priority so if this is very small 
we don't see any obstacle avoidance. It is very large. We will see the robot will try to avoid the obstacle even at the cost of the tracking error. Uh, again, also another important feature of her work is that uh, instead of using, uh, for example, in several other papers, they just uh, assume a very regular shape of the obstacle. For example, a circular point, a square or rectangular. But in our case, we use a GJK algorithm. There is a greedy algorithm which can which can uh, give the minimum distance between any two uh, any two shapes. So if we feed in the geometry of our obstacle and our joint, it will give us the minimum distance. So we will use this GJK algorithm to calculate the distance between obstacle and the length of our robot. Similarly, here again, uh, we have, so since we have this mobile platform, it will change the forward kinematic model of the robot. So if you, if we analyze this system, we can see that we can decouple it from, uh, we can, uh, we can further divide it into two parts. First part is contributed by the mobile platform and second part is contributed by our robotic arm. So F is the, Small f is the forward kinematic of our robotic arm, and if we combine it with all of this term, it creates the forward kinematic model of the entire robot with the uh, with the base platform. And this is the for forward kinematic model of our differentially driven robot. So at the end, we can again model it as an optimization problem with this objective function. And these constraints, this is again the joint actuation limit and joint angle limit. And this is a non holonomic constraint on the mobile platform. And again, this is with the mobile platform have two wheels. So this is the limit on the speed of these wheels. And then we have the projection function. So uh, whenever the, uh, whenever the set point tries to go outside of the, this piece constraint region, we will again project it inside. And at the end, we have the optimization function, objective function for the RCM constraint. So again, we have two minimization problems. We can again incorporate them into one objective function using penalty time approach and using lambda as a trade-off between these two objectives. So, uh, as I've showed that all of these optimization problems can be, uh, all of these uh, problems of the robotic arm can be unified it into objective functions and were created as optimization problem. So this is the, this is a schematic diagram of how we convert the visual DNA search to, you, to be used for the, uh, to be used for controlling of the robotic manipulator. So robotic arm. So first of all, here we we use the concept of virtual manipulator and a real. So this is a this, this is the output of our algorithm, uh, which will control the actual rob robotic arm. And here we have the virtual robotic arm, which so we know the model of our robot and we simulate the model of our robot to to calculate this part to calculate this part. So now let me talk a little bit about the numerical evaluation. So again, first of all, talking about the tracking control problem, we implemented the, the framework which I just showed and the, and we give two, if we give a, a time dependent reference trajectory. So this reference trajectory uh, move in a regular a rectangular direction, a rectangular shape. And as you can see, we start with an initial configuration. So the robotic arm starts at vertical position. And when we run our algorithm, it will eventually move toward the reference trajectory and then it will follow it very smoothly. Here we can see the tracking error is quite small. Similarly, the object, the object, value objective function is also quite small. 
Similarly, again, we tried a different reference trajectory. And again, you can see uh, it started from the initial position and it is able to track the reference trajectory quite well. Uh, and this is also another important feature of algorithm. If we use the traditional Jacobian, uh, Jacobian method, uh, inverse Jacobian method, in that case, uh, it cannot start from an arbitrary position. We, uh, we always need to start it on the reference trajectory, but in case of our beta data search algorithm, it is able to start from an arbitrary position and eventually reach the reference trajectory. Again, the numerical evaluation for the optical widens problem. This is again the the optimization problem, and we used uh, and we use the beta antenna search framework to solve this. So, as I mentioned, that this lambda term controls the trade off between these two. If we put the lambda equal to zero, this term becomes meaningless, and we don't we will not get any optical widening. Same is happening here. Is lambda is equal to zero, and you can see that the the robotic arm will try to follow the reference trajectory without any regard for the obstacle. But if we put a value of lambda, in this case, you can see it is still able to track this trajectory, but by avoiding the obstacle. Here, you can see from the top view that at all the points, the distance between the joints and obstacle was quite so the at drop point it come very close to the obstacle. Again, uh, the tracking error is small, and also the value of objective function also remain very small. Similarly, we then increase the value of the lambda. As I again previously mentioned, that lambda controls the trade off. So if we increase lambda. So the performance of the optical avoidance term will further increase. So if you compare this with this, you can easily see that the, the length of, of joints from the obstacle in this case is large because the value of the lambda is large. So by controlling the value of lambda, we can control the trade-off between the tracking error and the uh, optical avoidance. Similar, we observe the same result for a circular trajectory. In this case, again, for small value of lambda uh, that, and large value of lambda, the distance between the obstacle and the length of the manipulator changes. This uh, this uh, graph, this shows the visualization of how actual robotic manipulator will follow the roughness trajectory. Now, let us talk about the mobile robotic arm. So again, I explained this. Uh, so we can model this and optimization problem. And again, we will use the framework, optimization framework to solve this. So it again shows. So, uh, so in this case, one of the important features is that uh, the since we have a mobile platform, so the base of the uh, robotic arm is no longer constrained to, to one point. It can easily move to other locations. So in this case, it is able to follow the trajectory even easily and even very far from the base point. Uh, similarly, with a uh, different type of reference trajectories. And Again, this shows uh, the visualization of how the robot will follow these trajectories using uh, the base platform. And at the end, we have again the RCM constraint. So this is our objective function. And again, we will use the force framework. And here we have this reference trajectory and incision point. And RCM point is uh, is right at the middle. So again, if we turn off the uh, RCM constraint term, output lambda equal to zero, you can see this is the incision point, and our goal is that at no point this the trajectory should move out 
of this incision point. But as you can see, it is all of the trajectories out of this incision point. So, but if we put value the lambda uh, to a non uh, to a finite value, you can see that at no point the trajectory moves out of the incision region. Similar for again for the linear path. And again, it shows the visualization for the board will actually follow the reference trajectory. So that was all about my research work for Vital Dina Ferret on Robotic Arm. Uh, if you have any question, please ask. And also, uh, this, this is a list of the publication which I used uh, to present the result in this, in this talk. Thanks.